this is Ralph and in this video I want to style this web page a little bit more but I'm going to come into an issue where I have the same element used in two different situations. So this is my structure HTML file and you can get this from the link in the video description. But I've got header, okay, so there is a header tag or header area, header section at the top of the body of my web page. It contains my headline one in this generic navigation area. I've got another header within the article. So I've got two headers on the page and I want to format them differently. And I'm going to format them with my style sheets. Now if I go to my style and I use a traditional type selector like we've seen before, we used a selector to control the body of the page, a selector to control the heading one of the page, I can use a selector to control the header element. And let's see, I'll go ahead and do a background color. It's a light yellow and a darker color. How about, uh, actually no, we'll leave that this just where it's at. Let's just do a background color on there. So let me go ahead and save this. And this is for the header element on my pages. So when I go to my browser and refresh, we'll see that both of those headers now have that yellowish background color. Well, I don't really want that. Um, I'm okay with the first header having that, but I don't want the second header to have that. So to solve this, I'm going to use what's called a descendant selector. When you're writing your CSS rules, you can simply put in one element and that's referred to as a type selector. I want to control the body of the page. I want to control the headline one of the page or all headline ones. I want to control the header of the page. But if the header is within an article, I want it to be different. Okay. For that one, I'll use a color transparent and I'll do a border that's a 5 pix solid and that yellow. So now when I head back over to my browser, make sure I'm saved and refresh, there we go. So I don't have the background color, but I do have the border. So this is a descendant selector. It allows me to control the header that's within an article different than the header. Now I had to put background color transparent. If I didn't do that, in fact, let me change this really obviously so we can really see. It would have continued to have that yellow background color. And that's where you get the cascading style sheets. I started off by saying that header elements were going to have a light yellow background color. Now I'm saying that the headers within the articles will in addition have a red solid border. But I wanted to negate the default background color or the inherent background color. So I need to put background color and I can choose, I can specify a different color if I'd like, but if I want to get rid of the color stated previously then I'll put in transparent. I'll go ahead and save that. Back to the browser. Refresh. Now if I want to get a little spacing between these two, well that can be done with simply the article. And I can put some margin top of about 10 pixels. Just like a margin on a document you're writing in Word. There we go refresh and now I've got some spacing up there. So using descendant selectors is going to come in handy, especially in situations where you might have multiple navs. I have one nav in the header of my document that could be different than a nav that I might have within an article. Now I don't have that situation, but it would look something like this. Navs would get one set of styling, but a nav within an article would get a different type of styling. Okay? And this comes up more often than you might think. For instance, a paragraph within an article might be treated differently than a paragraph that's within the header of an article. Okay, So the paragraph within an article, I want it to be different than the paragraph up here. How might the CSS structure look for that? Article P would have one set of styling where 
article header P would have a different set of styling. For instance, paragraphs in my article might have text indent of two M's. Go over that in just a second. Whereas articles header paragraph might have a text indent of zero M. Let's check this out. There we go. You can see the indentation of the paragraphs within my article. But look and notice how info about the author is not indented. Look at my footer. Uh, actually, I take it back. That's okay. That's that. Those indents were default on there. So everything's fine with those. I didn't have a footer in the article. But that takes care of that particular situation where we have paragraphs within the page and we want to treat them differently. Descendant selectors will help you do that.